Michael Rubin, and why does everyone want an invitation to his 4th of July all-white party? You see, growing up, Rubin wasn't a normal kid. When he was only 12, he opened a ski shop in his parents' basement, and by the time he was 15, he opened a retail store in his hometown in PA. This kid was doing half a million dollars in revenue. He was crushing it. He even bought a Porsche before he had a license. But at 16 years old, Rubin almost lost everything. That winter, there was no snow. Nobody was buying skis. And Michael had a couple hundred thousand dollars in bills he couldn't pay. Over a hundred people sued him. However, when he hired a lawyer, he learned you can't actually be responsible for debt unless you're 18 years old. He was able to settle his lawsuits for $38,000 and his parents gave him the money because he promised he'd stop doing the skiing business and just go to college. But of course, Michael didn't stop. Two weeks later, when another local ski shop went bankrupt, Michael bought all their inventory on auction for $13,000 and was worth $200,000. He didn't have any money to actually buy it though. His parents were done helping him. So Michael then knocked on every neighbor's door until someone would finally lend him the money. He was able to flip the skis for a profit and he learned a valuable lesson in this process. You're able to make a ton of money buying and selling stuff from closeouts. When he was 18, he went to Villanova but dropped out after only three weeks because he was already the biggest buyer and seller of closeouts in the entire skiing business. He then expanded to footwear and apparel and by the time he was 21, he was doing $100 million in sales. Ruben ended up selling his company to eBay in 2011 for $2.4 billion. Now, Fanatics was included in this business eBay purchased, but they didn't want it and they let him buy it back. And now, over the last 13 years as CEO, Michael has turned Fanatics into the largest sports merchandise company in the world worth over $30 billion. Ruben has also owned the 76ers, the New Jersey Devils, and for 4th of July every year, he hosts his white party at his mansion in the Hamptons. Only 350 people were invited this year, and each of them got a special pair of Travis Scott Jordan 1s. People have tried to pay a million dollars to get into this party, but Ruben turns them down. No amount of money can get you an invite. Now to hear more stories like this, drop a follow. Did anyone else find the invitations to the all-white party extremely weird? This is the highest profile party in the world called the all-white party. It's hosted by billionaire Michael Rubin and it happens every year on the 4th of July. But there was something about the invitations that just didn't sit right with me. This one is Tom Brady's, this one right here is Drake's, and this is Quavo's. You can see all of the celebrities' invitations if you just look them up. But if you pause and look at the artwork, there's some weird stuff going on. These invitations were done by George Kondo. This is a very popular artist, and some of his artwork goes for millions of dollars, and he gave each celebrity their own unique invitation. And I looked up some of his artwork, and he has a lot of interesting stuff, including when he collabed with Kanye West for one of his album covers, he drew him up a bunch of artwork. Yeah, I mean, it speaks for itself. A lot of people question what actually goes down during this party, especially after they saw what Michael Rubin made Meek Mile do, jumping around like a bunny because he supposedly lost the bet. And then in the private jet, when Lil Baby and Meek Mill were saying that they were gonna get drunken hugs if they don't behave at the party. I don't care what anyone says. You're getting a drunken hug. You too. You too. Drunken hugs are coming tonight.